All right, a quick introduction about me. If you missed this morning's keynote, is that a problem? Sorry, <laughs> thank you. Oh, it's the speaker notes. Thank you for that reminder, appreciate it. Sometimes it, we're nearsighted. All right, it's good? All right, thanks so much. Um, okay, yeah, a quick introduction about me. I'm a head of open source at Solo. I've been one of the founding members at the Israel community. I wrote two books, and uh, I'm also a CNCF ambassador. Now I'm going to pass the mic to Ben to give a quick intro. Uh, I'm Ben, uh, principal engineer on the open source team with Lynn at Soloio. Uh, I've been doing Kubernetes for a long time and Istio for what seems like a really long time. And uh, yeah, constantly learning. This has been fun stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. And uh, just a little bit introduction about our company because it's a small company. How many of you actually heard of our company? Wow. Thanks. You probably saw this too at, uh, I guess, Chicago Airport. Um, so that's all uh, welcome. So thank you. So um, that's my boss, Edie Lavigne. So uh, we will for the small company. Today we're going to talk about WASM landscape a little bit, how Istio fits in, right? So we, we were working from the Istio project. We primarily are part of the embedded function uh, of the WASM landscape. Uh, so you can see Istio in there. I believe Envoy Proxy is also in there. Kubernetes is also in there. Um, so Knative is also in there. So that's a couple of surrounding the projects related to what we are working on uh, in a daily basis, uh, part of the embedded function. So how many of you know what Service Mesh is? All right, looks like most of you already know what Service Mesh is. So in a nutshell, Service Mesh is a programmable framework to allow you to observe secure connect microservices. And this is the Service Mesh landscape by CNCF. You can see, I guess the biggest news is that Istio is a CNCF graduation, graduated project. Um, and Service Mesh architecture, you're probably not surprising, uh, it uh, forms the sidecar architecture, right? So the sidecar does the magic to help you connect secure and observe your microservices. So you don't have to write code in your application to do that. So um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about service mesh evolution. In 2017, interesting enough, when LinkedIn uh, One first launched, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, at the KubeCon in Austin, it was the only KubeCon that has a little bit of snow, right? And uh, they announced this project called Conduit that um, essentially proposing, you know, you don't need Saika, why can't you just run the proxy per node? But um, LinkedIn soon find out, you know, the sidecar architecture is more uh, mature. It has more advantage around isolation, security. So say they switch to the sidecar model. Uh, if you look at the landscape of service mesh, most of all the projects using Envoy proxy as the sidecar proxy. So Envoy is pretty much the de facto standard for sidecar proxy. Uh, now I'm going to pass to Ben to talk a little bit about challenges with sidecars. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff is going to be old news to some of you. Like, sidecars have been a contentious topic from day one. And, like, we all know what the difficulty is with those, right? You have to actually inject a layer 7 slash layer 4 proxy into every workload pod to get all these benefits. That's expensive, right? That kind of increases the budget for each and every app you're going to deploy. And it means you have to do things like restart the app to inject. You have to, you know, adopting a service mesh is an expensive thing that requires you to recycle the applications you actually want to uh, handle. Uh, and that's just, that's just a burden that, you know, people have been trying to get away from. So the idea is, hey, maybe we can get rid of some of this complexity, right? Maybe we can remove some of this burden here on uh, the disruption and the burden on the workspace and the applications as well. And people thought things like, you know, maybe we can do things like move this to user space or move this, out of user, out of, move this proxy information and functionality out of user space into kernel space, right? Stuff like security, stuff like policy enforcement. 
Um, can we do these things, just get rid of the user space proxy entirely and do them all in eBPF? Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work because eBPF is not designed to do most of the things that a high level layer seven user space proxy can do. Stuff like encryption, just not gonna happen in eBPF. And I, I've done eBPF, I've written eBPF uh, modules. It's really not designed to handle that higher level stuff. Up to layer four, sure. But layer seven stuff, it's just not really feasible to actually move all of that stuff out of user space into kernel space. So what can we do about sidecars, right? The difficulty, of course, with Envoy is, you know, tenancy and figuring out that issue for, you know, how to have tenancy, right? If you have a shared proxy, how do you avoid noisy neighbor? How do you avoid churn? Uh, how do you avoid all these issues that people have with a shared proxy between workloads? And the, you know, there's been some research into this, but generally the way you want to do it is by splitting functionality. All right, thanks, Ben. So I'm going to talk about slicing the layers, right? Because the layer seven proxy is not designed for multi-tenancy. So what we come up with the right architecture in the Istio community is slicing the secure overlay layer, which is a layer three, layer four, uh, into a separate layer, then the layer seven processing layer. So as you can see, this allows us to having secure overlay layer to be a per node proxy while you can have dedicated layer seven proxy uh, for whatever tenant scope that you feel comfortable, whether it's per namespace or per service account. Um, so uh, in a nutshell, the secure overlay layer is very similar to the per node proxy where LinkD 1.0 uh, was doing in 2017, but it only handles the layer four functionality uh, where you potentially feel more comfortable to share with the other applications uh, from a different tendency. So all it does is um, the layer four here, try a basic security, mutual TLS tunneling, TCP um, metrics and logging, and also um, basic TCP routing. The layer seven processing layer, you get all the functions you see in the sidecar today. That's layer seven, uh, resiliency, traffic shifting, canary um, upgrades, uh, lay, reach layer seven authorization policy, uh, layer seven uh, request uh, telemetry. So all that function is uh, scoped to your tenant scope, uh, which in this case is based on your application. So you don't have any noise neighbor problem, you don't have any cost attrition problem uh, by having your dedicated Envoy proxy handles layer seven. Uh, Istio, you guys all know Istio, by the way, how many of you are actually using Istio today? All right. How many of you heard of Istio Ambient Service Mesh? All right, very cool. <laughs> so um, just a quick update in the community. Uh, we launched Ambient in 2022, and in the community, we're working very hard to uh, reach Ambient to beta. Right now, it's still in alpha status. We're trying to close a couple of key functions before we get to uh, beta. Uh, last year, we launched, uh, we launched Ambient, and uh, the founder of Envoy, which is uh, Matt Klein, said this is the right uh, architecture going forward uh, with uh, the separation between layer four and layer seven and be able to move in the sidecar outside of your application. So uh, we did launch, this is our launch blog. As if you read the blog, uh, Ambient essentially focused on simplify operation, reduce cost, and be able to improve performance for you. Now, I want to show a little bit of progression of Wasm in Istio. Um, so we, when we started with Istio, we started with the mixer component and uh, it, we, we were able to support Wasm using Envoy filter resources. And then we remove our mixer. If you guys know Istio well enough, uh, we added support for Wasm runtime in the Istio proxy. Uh, we started with Solo was talking about Wasm deployment resource and that become a standardized resource with a lot of more work from the community become the Wasm plugin resource. And now the community is looking at adding Wasm plugin resource to Istio Ambient Service Mesh. So a quick introduction of Wasm plugin resource. How many of you actually use Wasm plugin resource in Istio? 
All right. <laughs> Thanks a few of you. Um, so it's actually really easy to use. It's declarative, so you can select uh, which um, workload the Wasm plugin is going to apply to. You can specify its faces, its images, you can set the environment variables. Um, so all that configuration is available for you. What uh, essentially works behind the scene is as a user, you deploy Wasm plugin resource and uh, it's deployed to your Kubernetes cluster and STOD monitors Wasm plugin resources and pushes the configuration down to the Istio agent, which typically runs alongside of your Istio proxy. And that proxy could be your sidecar proxy and could be the waypoint proxy that handles layer seven processing in Istio ambient service mesh. And if the Istio agent doesn't have the WASM uh, image, it's going to go out to uh, OCI registry to register the image and, uh, uh, have, and then provide config the proxy, which is on way to execute the WASM image at the right uh, time and window that's uh, per your WASM plugin spec. So uh, this is how the sequence work uh, with one, two, three, four, five that I just described. Um, now a little bit more about Wasm and uh, Envoy. So Envoy has Wasm extension natively built within Envoy. Um, you can do basic configuration for Wasm plugins through uh, Envoy. You can configure your uh, Envoy Wasm VM, which is runtime uh, that that V8, and you can also configure environment variable for your Envoy Wasm VM. So that's all possible through Envoy configuration. Uh, with that, we're going to show a quick demo. And apologies because of uh, my machine had some problem from the keynote early on, so I couldn't do a live demo from my machine. So uh, luckily, I did get this recorded on Friday night uh, before the trip. So uh, what I'm showing is I have a simple project using assembly script. As you can see, this project essentially does is adding a simple header, right? So in this add header commands uh, um, class and method, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say hello Wasm Day 2023 uh, North America KubeCon, right? As a part of the response, um, add this uh, to the response uh, headers. And uh, I'm going to also run this, um, uh, I'm going to build this, uh, actually I already built this code uh, using, uh, using the right tool and it produced the Wasm uh, binary called Optimize Wasm. And now I'm going to try to run this using Docker. So you can see my Docker Compose file, really simple. I'm using Envoy, uh, dev image of Envoy, and I'm launching two volumes. One is my Envoy configuration, the other one is the Wasm binary. So for the Envoy configuration, you can see I have listener, I'm listening on 10,000. I set up an HTTP connection manager, and all it does is uh, it returns have a nice day in the body. Um, so that's my HTTP connector filter. I also have a Wasm filter, uh, which is my HTTP filter. And in this Wasm filter, I'm setting up runtime.v8 as my runtime, and I'm adding a header which runs the optimized Wasm file. And last of the least, I have a router filter which is required uh, for, for the Envoy. Um, Envoy filter to be the last one. So as you can see, I'm running Docker Compose to, um, to start my Envoy. And uh, now what I'm doing is I'm going to cur um, the local host um, 10,000 port. And so you can see here is my hello Wasm day 2023 North America KubeCon. So that's um, my Wasm binary gets uh, executed and you can see have a nice day at the end too. So that's essentially in a nutshell of how Envoy can be work with Wasm to execute our Wasm runtime. Now I'm going to pass on to Ben to show a more exciting demo about how Envoy uh, Istio uh, with Ambient work with Wasm. 
Yeah, well, I, I hope it's more exciting because uh, if it doesn't work since it's live, we're going to have problems, but, you know, it's all good. All right. Um, so let's see if I can... Come on now. Here we go. All right. Hopefully this is visible. Um, can you... Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I should have done that one. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to actually install Istio in ambient mode. I'm going to try to install it on top of an existing application, show that, you know, the application works before and after. Then I'm going to actually apply a WASM filter to change the behavior of the application without having to restart any of the application pods. So if we look at what I got in this cluster right now, it's uh, the standard Istio book info app. Now, there's no Istio. Um, there's no Istio namespace, none of the Istio is installed. It's just a plain cluster with uh, a couple of web services. And I'm going to go ahead and port forward this guy so we can get to it. And just to kind of show you if you've not seen it, it's a simple bookstore app, a couple services, right? A front end app that calls a book info details service and a book info review service. And then if you go to a particular page, it you know shows you the details from the details microservice and the reviews from the reviews microservice standard stuff, right? The interesting thing here is that we've got an Arthur SSN in the details. And, you know, this is a problem because this is leaking PII. And for some reason, when we try to tell the, you know, the, 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 we try to tell the, the, the team that operates this details app, they're like, no, you can't restart it. You can't, you can't mess with that. It's, got, it's a critical app and you can't touch it. So you're like, okay, what do we do? We still got to do something here. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to make sure I did the restart order. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and, so I've got book info already in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, install Istio in ambient mode, uh, creating the namespace and just using this thing. Okay. So now we're going to sit here and hopefully this will be fast because I locally loaded the images. So we've installed in this cluster Istio now. So we have the existing book info stuff, which has been there for 16 hours. And then we've got Istio in ambient mode, which is CNI on the agent. Z tunnel, which is the layer four proxy, and an ingress gateway and a COD, and that's about it. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here, if I can get to it, nope, wrong window. What I can do here is I'm going to go ahead and turn on ambient for that namespace. So all our book info stuff is deployed in default, the default namespace, right? It's all there. So I'm going to go ahead and now ambient is, in, SEO is installed in ambient mode, but it's not capturing anything yet because we haven't told it what namespaces we want it to start handling the networking for. So we're going to do that with this label on the namespace of default. Okay, there we go. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and port forward again and we should make sure everything works correctly. Still, after we installed SEO and captured stuff. Do, do, do. All right, normal user. Oh, good. And just to prove that it actually worked, let's see if we can um, actually get some logs. Uh, let's see what's in Istio system. Ooh, system. Yep. yep. Okay. And let's look. So these and these, all these, uh, let's see, product page is on worker two. So let's look for the Z tunnel in that node. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And which one is that one? That one's ZH. Okay, 2HH. Okay. Yep. So we should see something in here. Um, yep, see there's 9080. So it's actually going through, the, the traffic is now going through the Z tunnel after I installed Istio. And you'll notice um, that none of the app pods have restarted, right? So we went from nothing being captured and redirected through these node level proxies to they're being redirected. That's cool now. Yeah. So what can we do about this SSN? All right, well, Z tunnel is layer four. We want to do this at layer seven. We want to actually read the HTTP request and redact this thing. It's kind of a, a monkey patch thing. So let's try that. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, apply a waypoint, which is a layer seven proxy. And what that's going to do is in the default namespace next to the workload, it's going to create one uh, a layer, an envoy proxy, which is purely for layer seven and which is bound to the service account of the details app. And recall details here is the one returning the SSN. So now that we've got that, it should be healthy. There it is. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is um, reload this page to make sure that actually, you know, oh, I got to port forward again. Port forward. Now, if I reload this page, we should see everything just as it did before. 
Um, if I check the Envoy logs, you would see that it would be going through Envoy, but we're going to prove that more effectively here by going in and applying this WASM plugin. Now, this WASM plugin essentially is just a tiny Go app that detects via regex the um, SSN in the request body and then blanks it out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And just to kind of show you what this WASM plugin is, it is, again, the WASM plugin resource that Lynn just talked about. It's pulling an OCI image from a repository. It's just gonna actually redact that. Okay, so now, if I go over here and refresh, whoop, oh, it redacted, yeah. And just to kind of prove what I'm talking about here, again, go back, look at our actual app pods. None of them are restarted. Didn't and none to of touch them, them have sidecars either. Well, none of them have sidecars either, right. So we were able to take a WASM plugin and actually apply it to something without touching it in a pretty effective way, right? You, WASM plugins are not new. Envoy integration with WASM is not new, but adding that to Ambient gives you this ability to quickly do things like jump in there and change stuff without having to run afoul of, oh, I don't want to restart this app, right? I don't want to touch this app. It's much more lightweight, low touch. So, yep, that's it. Awesome, that was a super cool demo. Uh, one other thing I want to highlight during Ben's demo, as you can see, the Waypoint proxy is optional, right? If you just come to Istio Ambient, you need uh, layer four functionality, you need Mitchell TLS, you need encryption, uh, you need FIPS compliance, you don't need to deploy Waypoint. However, since we're at WASM Day, if you need layer seven processing, you could optionally deploy that. So that's super cool. Uh, to summarize, uh, Istio supports WASM natively with Sidecar today. Istio Ambient introduced a new data plane mode to allow you to enroll your application into the service mesh without using Sidecars. You no longer need to recycle your application paths like Ben showed in the demo, right? There's no Sidecar running alongside of your application pod. Uh, it's still possible using Ambient to support few, few full future set of existing layers have a proxy. The difference is you run the waypoint proxy outside of your application pod. Uh, and then what's super neat is you can inject a layer seven uh, Envoy WASM plugin without touching the application pod, right? So your application pod can stay running while it's your waypoint proxy execute uh, your WASM um, images for you within the V8 runtime within Envoy. So with that, I think we have a few minutes for questions. I want to thank you all for attending and this is the QR code to get you our survey feedback. So um, if, if you guys have any questions, uh, we'll be here for two minutes and we'll also stay around a little bit after the talk. Uh, first, a big thank you. Questions? I've got a question. Um, uh, this idea with service mesh has always really resonated with me be, uh, because it's very similar to what I think WebAssembly is trying to do and uh, pull complexity out of your apps and put it on a common rail. Um, uh, are there plans to adopt the WebAssembly component model? I don't think there are currently in a concrete way, but I think that, you know, I, that's one of, actually I missed that talk earlier. I wanted to go to the component model talk for Wasm, but yeah, I think that's something that definitely as people use these things more, that's something to definitely look into because I think it's a market improvement over the status quo. Yeah. yeah, I agree with Ben. I think in our community, that's a new thing. We're trying to learn what it is and how does it apply to service mesh. Uh, but for now, I think uh, getting the ambient out, be able to support Wasm within ambient is probably probably like the first thing we want to focus on and then look at the component model to see how it could potentially impact us. Yeah. That's great. Uh, that prompted some questions. Let's go. Uh, great, uh, great talk. Thank you very much. Uh, so my question is like a little on the meta side of this. Uh, so effectively what you were doing here in this demo, in particular, you were hacking with an application really. So my question is, what is this author SSN as an integral part of the application? How I can protect that integrity from somebody coming in, writing a WASM model and basically changing the way my application works? 
That's a great question. I mean, not everybody have uh, authority to deploy uh, resources like Wasm plugin resources, right? So you typically in Istio, uh, any of the customer resources in Kubernetes, you can set access controls around it. So not everybody can go to you, a cluster to be able to do, like if you are able to deploy an application pod, doesn't mean you can deploy a Wasm plugin resource to be able to targeting uh, a particular application. And the other thing I would say, I believe these customer resources are only applicable within your the current namespace you have access to. So if you have access to namespace A, it doesn't mean you can deploy Wasm plugin resources to namespace B and then selecting the application in that namespace. Do you want yeah, yeah. and it is a contrived example, right? Just to kind of show you visually what's happening. But like, yeah, Kubernetes has RBAC to prevent you from, to let, to let anyone running the cluster to set up who can do what, who can change what, who can apply what to what workload. That's all built into Kubernetes as existed for a while. This follows that paradigm. The other thing too is that since now that you know you can deploy WASM images as OCI, uh, that opens up much more robust things around like you know signing those artifacts and making sure that only signed images that actually mutate behavior are deployed in a cluster and being able to prove that kind of thing, right? Those are the actually moving that stuff into the OCI layer is like a pluggable image. I think really makes that a lot easier to control than it was before, where it was maybe just an Nginx config floating somewhere, right? All right, thank you. Yeah, great question, thank you. That's a good question, who's next? Oh, there's a question there. Oh, sorry. So I saw you had a tiny go sort of program that you were compiling. What languages, SDKs do you support? Do you have to build out these for everything you want people to be able to build in their language for, or could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the um, I think the Envoy support is pretty robust, and pretty much anything that um, you know, Rust all those sort of things. Whatever it's a standardized target, so any any Wasm binary that can be published as an OCI artifact should work, um, and any language that targets that should work. We've tried a few things. Go is the most common one, but I think some of them may have tried Rust. I don't know, but yeah, it's it's. Envoy's implementation is pretty robust there, and it shouldn't require any finagling if you're using a relatively uh, good target. Yeah, we also have a assembly scripts version for the demo uh, that we didn't show, but it's similar functionality, yeah. So maybe a follow-up question to that, and then I'll come to you in the green shirt here. Um, if, you had, if you published um, uh, a WASI spec uh, for this, um, then wouldn't you get your SDKs for free for all the languages? Yeah, that, that's probably true. Something to look into, yeah. Awesome, oh, here you go. Uh, again, great demo. Uh, can you tell me about a few ways we can troubleshoot a Wasm plugin if you know we create one and we see if something's wrong, what's a good way to troubleshoot uh, those plugins? That's a great question. I, I can take a step at it. Uh, yeah, troubleshooting is actually not the easiest way because when I first tried this, it actually didn't work uh, with Ambient. So I had to troubleshoot him by looking at the Envoy configuration and figure out what potentially goes wrong. And the other thing I did was I enabled the debug logs for Envoy and then tried to figure out like the stages we were trying to show uh, in Istio, right? Which stage is failing? Like I have to figure out uh, does the binary was able to was the agent able to download the binary? Was the binary able to get executed yeah. in Envoy? Uh, does the SUD get the was unplugging resource? You know, do I have the right access uh, control and privilege to do things? Yeah, it's like different hops in here could be wrong. So I had to, um, like in the cases I was debugging, I think three and four had some problems. So I have to keep looking into that. Um, I don't know. If then you won't add anything. Pretty much it, right? It's making sure the OCR artifact is actually pulled and pullable. If that works, if Envoy says it did that by checking the logs, then at that point, it's like, yeah, it, I personally rely on info, like logs from the actual uh, Wasm plugin to see what it's doing. But, and yeah, uh, where do we see like the logs for the Wasm plugin? Like, do, are they a part of the, are they part of SQD or? Oh, it's uh, part of the Istio log, uh, Istio proxy log. So if you're running Saika, it would be part of the Saika log. If you're running Ambient, it would just be the Waypoint proxies log. And then you, there are ways you can enable like debug version for them. But even without debug, you should be able to see some basic logs. I see. Thank you. 
We've got time for maybe one more question. All right over there, hold on. Uh, one question. So I think in here, the Wozen plugin is running inside Envoy, right? Uh, I mean, in ambient mesh, we also have that Z tunnel. Will, do we also have a design where the Wozen is going to run in Z tunnel maybe? Because that's where it's going to do layer four stuff, whereas this is more application stuff happening. Yeah, no, we don't have any plans. So if you look at this uh, slicing the layers, right, uh, the purpose of a Z tunnel is to keep the secure overlay layer very, very minimum. So there is no intention to do any layer seven processing in Z tunnel. So if you want to execute your Wasm binary, you will have to deploy a waypoint proxy for that. And that design principle also allow us to scale uh, Z tunnel to very, very big scale. Yeah, I hope that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The, 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 there's no plans right now to do, you know, it's, it, layer seven is the only thing Envoy supports, and the only thing it supports processing for. Um, doing in layer four exclusively in Z-Tunnel is not planned, because again, we want to keep it simple, but that could happen. Uh, that could work, yes. All right, um, I think both presenters are available for questions afterwards. If you want to keep it going, please join me in thanking Lynn and Ben. Thanks, everybody.